Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm here to another video that it may get a little bit longer because I'm going to show you some pens and the pens that I'm going to show you today is in this collection overview is a series of pens that are Italian. Sometimes I like to make videos like this, like just showing pens of the same color or of the same country. Today we are going to Italy. Some of these pens I already showed to you in some other videos, some other series or even on reviews or unboxings. So this may be or not be interesting for some of you. I hope it is. And let's start. I'm going to show you all the Italian pens I have in my collection. I had a few more that I made videos about that no longer are in my collection and I went because I exchanged it, exchanged it with someone and some others that were sent to me as a loan like some Aurora or Pinider that I don't know, I no longer have them. So let's start and be aware this may, may get long. So the first pen I have to show you is a brand with which I used to, to have this kind of collaboration. I don't really understand what happened but uh, the communication stopped a little bit, which is Montegrappa. And I had a couple of Montegrappa pens. This is one of those. This is the Montegrappa Elmo 01. And it is an interesting pen with a number 6 nib, this typical kind of Montegrappa pen with coarse threads and it is a cartridge converter, so a nice pen with a vintage inspired design. This pen is now available in many other colors and finishes and uh, some are even exclusive editions for some countries. The other pen I have from Montegrappa, not the other, but some other pens that I have from Montegrappa, one of them is this. And this is a pen from Game of Thrones collection. This was the kind of regular collection, not the limited, very, very expensive ones. So it has the Game of Thrones there, Montegrappa on the back. These like the, the decoration uh, thing. It has like kind of a seal there on the top with a deer, the same deer is here. And this is for the Game of Thrones. This was inspired on the house Baratheon. So the elements reminds us of that. It has a gold metal section, gold metal nib and sword there on the design of the nib. I find this nib quite beautiful. I made a review of this pen also about the previous one. I guess I reviewed all the Montegrappa pens that I'm going to show. The next one is not one but three. I will put them all at the same time. This is the Montegrappa Fortuna. The Fortuna collection is the collection that has this long barrel that tapers down a little bit and then it has a bulky cap. This is the, the, these three are the Fortuna range but from a collection that was called Heartwood. It was made in many other, not in many, but in a couple of other woods like natural teak and also olive and I don't know which more were made but I got these three and I find them quite interesting because they are made of wood they have bronze colored trim like the medallion with the Montegrappa logo on the top focus please 19, 1912 also the clip has the same color and we have three pens.
pens and three colors. This one is dark teak. A very beautiful tropical uh, wood that in this case is uh, dyed in a black color. Then we have the pier, the, the tree that gives us piers, pier wood. And walnut, and I think this is the nicest. Also the olive one is beautiful, but I don't have that. Here you have, these are the old style nibs, they are much drier than the newer nibs, like the one on the Montegrappa Elmo. Next pen, still Montegrappa. This is another Montegrappa Fortuna, as you may see for the kind of bulky cap and the long barrel, but this one is, has black trim, the black 1912 logo there, and this one is called the Crowned Skull. Why? Because it has skull, skulls and roses and keys and bones and some patterns that are very interesting. The pen has a matte surface there with these glossy parts, very beautiful, these engravings. And then on the top of the cap it has a skull, I think you can see it, with a red jewel, two red jewels on the cap, two crystals, and it has a crown, uh, two crystals on the crown, so this is the crown skull. The only thing about this pen that could be more interesting is if the nib was black, like the rest of the trim. And now I will change the light a little bit and let's go to the next pen. Okay, I changed the light a little bit, I think now you can see it better. And here we have the Montegrappa Fortuna Mool or Copper Mool. This is a pen that is made of copper and it is a beautiful pen. I think it's not full copper, it's just the, the outer part, I would think. It's not heavy enough, but it, it can be very shiny, almost a mirror-like finish if you polish it, but if you leave it to, to oxidize, it becomes like this. This is the same kind of pen, it has a silver nib, a silver colored nib, that has, I think it has some staining from the, from the ink I used. And it is a beautiful pen. I really like this pen. It is, it is so nice. This was the first Montegrappa pen that I had. And I think this is really beautiful one. And now, let's go for the final Montegrappa pen, which is the Montegrappa Montegrappa Coral. And this pen has the same name of the brand. It's quite confusing. Uh, this is the, the logo you see there, the 1912 logo. Then you have the, um, the clip. This is made of resin. It doesn't look like that, but it's a coral color. Then it has this part that seems like a, a beer cap uh, bottom. And then the name of the pen is inspired in a vintage uh, model. So it has the vintage logo with Monte, which means mountain, and Grappa, which is the place where Monte Grappa are made. And it has the design of the, the Monte Grappa. So this is called Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa. It is a piston filler pen. And it has this steel nib that is very similar to the others. I really like this pen. And this is a piston convert. This is a uh, piston pen instead of uh, the other ones. And this piston filler pen has some interesting stuff. It has no ink window, that, which is maybe a problem for some. And the blind cap, when you are using the piston, it does not protrude, protrude out when you depress it. So it stays on the same place. It also makes this interesting clicking mechanism, like if you were winding a clock. And this is it. I also find this pen 
quite nice. I like a lot this pen. And now that we are done with Montegrappa, let's go to another brand that no longer exists. And this is a very big pen, as you may see. No, it's not. It's very small. It is a Filcao Mini, Oops. which is really, really a uh, small pen. This pen has a design that reminds us of the uh, Parker dual fold, the vintage one model. So straight cap, a straight barrel with the top of the cap with this knurling. Quite similar, but very, very small. It is marbleized uh, finish and it costs around 10 euros, so quite inexpensive. And it says they're Phil Cow. And do you know what? The nib on this one is quite good. I don't know if I can focus this. I don't know why I am having some problem in focusing. It says they are Filcao Italy, very simple nib, but it is branded with the brand, so which is nice, and it only takes cartridge, of course. If you want to have an idea of the size of the pen, let me show it to you. This is a normal sized pen, like this. This is very, very small. The interesting part is that it has a number 5 nib, so it in this pen, a number 5 nib, oops, I'm always dropping it because it is so small. In this pen, a number 5 nib is, looks quite big and I think that's a nice thing. So this pen writes beautifully. It, be <laughs> sorry. it becomes perfectly usable like this when posted and the nib is really, really good. So a very nice, very small pocket pen and... I think this is really an amazing little pen. And from this one, we will jump to one of my favorite pens. At least now. This pen is the Netuno 1911. I've showed you this pen several times. It was in the top 10, uh, in the top, uh, my top list of pens from last year. Uh, it is always on the pens for the month and some other videos and it has the waves there because of Netuno, the god of the seas with the trident there and it has these arches. It has a vintage look to it, very beautiful. This is called Netuno 1911 Dark Sands. It has a nib with the N from Netuno there and this pen writes Beautiful. You can check the review of it and there you can see the writing sample. The nib has some give to it. It's soft. It is very well done. It is a steel nib, but this is a very, very nice pen. It is quite big. It's a full-sized pen and number six nib, which writes really well. After the Netuno 1911, we'll go to two vintage pens. The first one, they are two Aurora pens. This one is Aurora, an Aurora Duo Cart, a vintage version of the Aurora Duo Cart. This is the, it was still called Aurora 88 and then Duo Cart. And it was called Duo Cart because you had this barrel where you could fit two cartridge inside. So Duo Cart. It has a flex nib, the burgundy with the grey color, it's very nice. The cap is very short, but it is an interesting pen. I think it is kind of fun. I, I, I really think this is a, an interesting design. I would love to have a modern Aurora Duo card, but I cannot pay for every pen I want to have. And then I want to show you this one. This is the Aurora Duo, the Aurora 88, the Nicargenta. Nicargenta was the, the, this kind of cap, which is a silver nickel um, mixture of metals. Uh, it has a good nib with this tear shape. It has a very soft pattern there on the cap, 
very very almost invisible lines it has a barrel made of celluloid and then the section and the end of and the, the turning knob for the piston filler because this is a piston filler is uh, made of ebonite are made of ebonite and so you can see there is some discoloration of this part because when the pen is kept this part is exposed to light that one is not so it is discolored there it also has the same symbol with Aurora 88 and it has a serial number uh, hooded nib and a piston that works very well without coming out also from the from the barrel which is something it, it is a detail that I like and this pen is very very good I really like this pen and talking about pens that are similar to others obviously this pen was inspired in the Parker 51 if you hold it like this and post it you don't see that ring on the turning knob, knob and this looks like a Parker 51 and in my opinion this pen is better than the Parker 51 and now we'll go to modern pens I have two modern pens to show you from an, an old pen manufacturer that is being uh, relaunched and they are releasing models inspired in the vintage model so a new brand but with inspiration in older models this pen, I showed you this pen few times this is one of the best pens I got in during this year and this is the Tibaldi we are talking about the Tibaldi Perfecta and the Perfecta was a, a very old model from the brand it has an eagle there on this steel nib but it writes really well it is a cartridge converter pen so don't think it is um, I, rem I don't I, a safety pen it's not the nib is not retractable but it has the same kind of looks as if it was and the pen is beautiful writes very good and this is the Tivaldi Perfecta the color is rich black and you understand it's rich black because it's really black it's very black you almost don't see the details it has this very simple clip with rubberized surface so this I would say this is the most modern accent on this very old pen but I really like the very old model in a very modern pen and I really enjoy this pen the other pen that I was talking about from the same brand also Tibaldi is this one then this is the the Tibaldi number 60 Samarkand blue and this color is amazing I think this material is very nice and it is really a vintage looking pen if you search for vintage Tibaldi pens you don't find a lot of them but if you look for them you'll find the pen with this similar design and with the three bands this kind of design exactly and this color was available maybe with different materials maybe it's celluloid and this is resin I don't know but um, the same kind of material, same kind of color was available uh, in the 30s, I think, or in the 20s. And the pen is really nice. It also has the same kind of nib. This one is a medium, the other one is a fine nib. This is the first pen of the group that I didn't review yet because I got it quite recently. It takes also cartridges or converters and it's really a nice pen one thing about this pen is that it is quite big let me show you here next to the Netuno 1911 or next to the Montegrappa Montegrappa and you see it is longer so quite a big pen and we jump from this one to a brand that is not a usual thing that when you think about Italian pens and this more unusually unusual brand is this Osama. Osama, I search for it. It is an Italian pen that made the pens. I, I think they didn't make the nibs, and the nib that is in this pen is not uh, an Osama nib. It is a, uh, 
Chinese nib, but the pen is quite interesting. It has a material that is beautiful. It says Osama there. I like the material. It is a snap cap. It's very, very uh, snug and it has this small section and you can see there it is a hero nib from China. It is a small pen but it is beautiful. It really has a vintage look. I don't think this is a vintage pen. It is a pen maybe from the 90s or the 80s. So, but it is interesting. I, I, I think it is a fun pen and it was quite inexpensive. So, I think this is an interesting thing that was not expected in such a lineup. You, this one, I also have the review on the channel. Actually, I have the reviews of all these pens except this one and another one that will show up later. Now, we'll go to a brand that I have lots of pens. That's what I, find out, I found out, which is the Leonardo Officina Italiana. And this is the messenger model with the orange color, although it is more yellow than orange. It is a beautiful pen, very simple, no big details about it. Very, very simple, very large. And I think this is a beautiful pen. There's nowhere to fail in this kind of design. You can take it everywhere, very beautiful. I, I really enjoy this pen, I like the color. I like this kind of material, very transparent. Very beautiful. And this was a limited edition. There is the numbers somewhere. There. I cannot see if they are upside down. I think they are. Yes, this is the number 6 from 366. So there were 366 pens of each model. And they were made 366 pens because we are in 2020 and in 2020 there are 366 days and you can still find some of the finishes online. I will have the links below for the videos of the pens, of the pen reviews that I made and also for the stores where you can get them. So if you are interested in get any of these pens, at least the ones that can be easily found somewhere. Some of those may be not that easy. Now, this is another pen from Leonardo and this is the Furore. The Furore has this cigar shaped shape and it is a beautiful pen, cartridge converter pen that can be accessed removing the barrel or removing the end cap and using it like if it was a piston filler and you can use, you can look at the nib, very nice, medium nib, this is made of steel, but the material is amazing, at least in my humble opinion. I like it a lot, although red is not my favorite color, but I really like this pen. Be aware, because I believe there will be soon the release of a grande, or, or, which means a big version of this pen. Now, we'll go to the other pen that was the first model of this quite new brand, which is the Momento Zero. And this was the Momento Zero in the color Pietra Marina, which means sea stone. And it has this very nice beautiful material with lots of chatoyancy and the same kind of nib as in the previous pen. The thing that is very distinctive on the Leonardo pens, except on the messenger, is the shape of the section, which is strange, but it is strangely comfortable to use. Otherwise, this pen is like the Furore, you can unscrew this to access the interior or you can just remove the blind cap and use the pen. Very beautiful pen. And then we go to another Leonardo and this is another Momento Zero. And this one is called the iRide. 
also a very beautiful material. I think Leonardo has great materials. And the biggest difference between this pen and the previous one, that this is from 2020, and the pens from 2020 have three cap rings. It is the big difference than the nib, the, the shape, the filling system, all the same. And then we go into the amazing, amazing Leonardo Ficina Italiana Momento Zero Grande, which is a pen with the same kind of overall design, different clip, different uh, small details, but this is a very big pen. The nib is of the same size, this is the same nib, the same shape, but it is a big pen, really, really a big pen. And this one is, you can access it here, like the Momento Zero, or you can access this, and this is not removable, this is a piston filler pen with a captive converter, you can not remove it, so it takes much more ink than that one, and it is a bigger pen and girthier, and let me just show you this amazing finish, this is called the Dark Hawaii, and I would say, in my very free interpretation, that these recalls of the depth of the sea and the blue of the sea with the, sea with the brownish sandy color of the sand. And by speaking of sand, one of my favorite pens ever, also another one, some are some here, I, I didn't ever expect it to, have, to like so much Italian pens. This is the same pen as that one. The Leonardo Ficina Italiana Momento Zero Grande. This color is called Sands and it looks the same pen overall, but it doesn't open here. It is a piston filler pen, so much bigger in capacity than this one. And it is real, uh, real, real or a regular piston filler pen. You just turn the filling knob and you fill or empty the pen. And this is it. This is a beautiful pen. This is my favorite material of all these Leonardo pens. And check the material. I don't think I can show it perfectly to you, but I, I really like it. The stripes, the way it makes these arches there. It, it is so beautiful. I really, really like this pen. And we are reaching the end of the video, but we still have two more brands, three more pens. The first one is this. I find this pen very nice. This is a Visconti Breeze. This color is lime green and the color is amazing. It is very fluorescent green. I think I would love to have all the, the Breeze collection. And this is a beautiful pen. The, the saddest, let's call it like that, saddest thing about this pen is that the nib is, number 5 nib is very small, but the pen is very nice, looks nice, writes well, which doesn't happen every time with Visconti pens, and it has this magnetic capping system, which is very good, and I really enjoy it. This is a pen, it is so fun. It's very beautiful and I really like the material because it's not just a plain fluorescent green. It is a... I would say it has some subtle marbling. However, talking about something subtle with this pen is not that right. Then we go for my second Visconti pen. And this pen I got this year when I traded it for, I changed this pen for a Montegrappa pen. And this is a Visconti Homo Sapiens, the pen made of lava, um, lava and uh, resin. Uh, this is the Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Oversize and it has bronze trim that gets this patina. And it has the capping system 
this bayonet capping system so you, you need to just uh, turn it very very slightly this is a pen that I have inked since I got it in January and I think you can see there the nib is a nib of 23 carat palladium so I think Visconti no longer makes palladium nibs I think they only make gold nibs. This is a nice pen and it has the power filling system which is a, a vacuum filler so it takes a lot of ink inside and I find this material very interesting, very organic however it is, it's not organic, it's made of lava but it's, it's an interesting material, very pleasant to the touch the nib is good and uh, it has some softness really really a beautiful pen don't forget to check the, the the links for the videos below where you can check the reviews of these pens and finally this is one of the most strange pens that I have in my collection I would say and this is the Marlon Aureus with this pen has a Marlon Aureus with a silver trim this pen is a limited edition and it is written somewhere on the cap there. Marlon Aureus, I think you can read that there. And this is the number 171. It's a beautiful pen with a silver finish. This very interesting uh, clip. And it has a coin there. It is a reproduction of a coin. And this is an homage to a Roman emperor that made a coin that like the uh, currency system that would be common to all the, the, the Roman Empire. So like a little bit like the euro is now used on the European Union. And because it made this coin that's here, the pen came and I have it uh, stored. It's not here with me now. It came with a, with a coin that would be put here and this is a coin filler instead of a lever filler it's a coin filler it has an 18 carat gold nib and i think this is a beautiful pen this was a pen that was a very strange deal i got it in a used stuff store and the pen has a problem is that it is warped I don't know if it's that visible, but it make the, the barrel is not straight. I think it went through some heat some some time in their history in its history, so it is warped there, and because it warped there, you can see there are some spaces between this box and the material because this are, are, is all out of place but the pen is beautiful the material is celluloid and I would say that this material is very nice so I got the pen quite inexpensive because it is it had this defect but the pen is wonderful the material is very beautiful with this kind of an arch also made of the tones of the celluloid and this is made of dark brown, golden brown and blue celluloid. I don't know if I can show it to you easily. And it is a very thick celluloid pen, so celluloid has can have these warping problems, but I think it is so thick the walls of the pen that there it must have been a lot of heat to make it warp. Beautiful, beautiful pen. So this is one of the most odd pens that I have in my collection, but a nice one. So, we reached the end of the video. Lots of Italian pens. I'm not sure if I can make m many more videos like this, because there are countries which I have only one pen or only one model with several variations, and there are countries that I have lots of pens Imagine if I made a video about German pens, it would be it would last forever. Just 
just because I have Caveco pens. So, and I have more than 100 just to show all those Caveco pens, it would take forever. And then there are the other German brands. So I need to see which, which more videos I will make about this kind of collections. Maybe I can start by making some videos of a specific brand or a specific color. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Maybe we'll say, show me videos where you have green, this is green and blue, but where you have green marbled or not plain green pens and I can show you some. So it may be interesting to, to go to make these kind of collections. If you have suggestions, please leave on the comments below. If you have questions about some of these pens, please let me know. Uh, this is a big collection, I may be selling a couple of those because they're, get, they're getting to be too many pens for me to store. And if you like the video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe the channel. It's really important to, to keep this going. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.